Okay, so this is viewing conditions, and this is the second half of week one's PowerPoint. So, view boxes. We need view boxes in order to see any kind of film. We won't be able to see it because it's not on a monitor, so we have to put it with some kind of light um, where we can hang the film and light comes through the film. So, um, with these view boxes that we have, ours are very old and they're for um, teaching purposes, so they're out of compliance for any kind of medical diagnostic department. Um, the light output on these view boxes reduces over time, and what happens with that, it reduces our image contrast. So um, when we're actually doing a diagnostic uh, image that a radiologist is going to read, there's QC that has to happen, and we need to make sure that the view boxes are up with encode. So there's quality control testing on these view boxes when we accept them from uh, the vendor, and then yearly after that. And when we're working in mammography, they're done weekly. This is a photographic light meter, also called a photometer. We use this to measure the light coming out of the view boxes. So when we do our inspections, we look for any kind of discoloration or dust or any other artifacts on the plate, the white plate that um, would be housing the film. Um, another thing we do is remove that front plate and we look at the bulbs and we look for, make sure that they're clean and they're not discolored and that they're the proper wattage. We'll determine the luminance uh, level of a single view box with the photometer and it should be at least 1500 nit or candela for general radiography and 3500 for mammography. So when we're looking for uniformity within the view box um, we take the luminance reading at the center of the view box and center of each quadrant with the photometer. We compare the five readings and make sure that they do not deviate by more than 10 percent from each other. So um, determine the uniformity of a bank of view boxes by comparing the center luminance reading of each view box. Make sure they're within 15% of each other. So if we're looking at um, all the view boxes in the department and we're comparing them, we're going to take a reading from the center and make sure they're within 20%. So within the same um, view box, they need to be within 10% of each other on the same view box. If we're looking at the two in the back room, so there's the one on the back wall and the other one on the wall, they need to be within 15% of each other. So then if we look at all the view boxes within our department, they need to be within 20% of each other. So we need to make sure that the color uh, temperature of the, of the view box, so we look for the whiteness of the light. Um, it requires a color temperature meter and the range should be between 5400 uh, to 10,000 and so the optimum is 6250. I don't know how much of that you need to know. I wouldn't worry too much about it but just know that um, when we're looking for color temperature we look for the whiteness of the light. That's what I'm looking for, the whiteness of the light. And the measuring the ambient levels, light levels. So you take the photometer and you measure the luminance in either foot candle or lux. So the maximum ambient lighting measured should not exceed 30 foot candles or 320 lux. Um, excessive ambient lighting will reduce displayed image contrast. So if the room is too bright where you have the view boxes, you are not going to be able to see um, your image contrast well. So we always dim the lights so that the light coming out of the view box really shows us our contrast of our image. So if I ask you a question like um, the ambient lighting in the room is very bright, is that good or bad for your view boxes? It's bad. You want dim light so that you can see your image contrast is the answer that I'm looking for. Okay, so that has everything to do with your view boxes. That's everything and anything on it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email.